<laughs> Those tracers are just cool. Guys, get a lot of questions about the Chris DMK22. Got a couple of them to show you guys. Let's get into the video. Chris came out with the DMK22 uh, around SHOT Show. There was a little bit of rebranding of this particular model, but this is their DMK22. It's an AR-15 style 22 long rifle. You've seen a lot of different AR-15 style 22 LRs on my channel, but this one is different than every one that I've ever shown you. We're going to get into that here in just a moment. But this is a very, very nice AR-15. This is not a cheaply made. This is, when you pick this firearm up, it feels like you're holding a real AR. I've got my silencer coat suppressor on here. It came with a nice little bird cage on it, but I had to take it off to put this suppressor. It does have your uh, pop-up battle sights. So if you do not want to run an optic, I've chosen to run the Crimson Trace CTS-1000. You've seen this particular optic several, several times on my channel. And it's just a really, really nice rifle. It's very well made. And this rail, man, this rail is like butter. I wish this rail was on every single one of my AR-15s. And you do have your adjustable stock right here in the rear. Now we're going to go over some of the things about this rifle here in just a minute that just makes it totally different than any other uh, AR-15 style 22 on the market. But before we do that, let's do some shooting. Now, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you know that I have put this rifle through its paces. I have fired over 1,800 rounds through this rifle alone. Out of those 1,800 rounds, I have had one failure to fire, which it did hit the primer, so the round just did not go bang, and we have had one stovepipe out of 1,800 rounds. So I can guarantee you this rifle is extremely dependable. We're gonna be shooting some 38 grain high velocity, some subsonics, some more Piney Mountain Tracers. We're even gonna shoot some Stangers through it. So I'm gonna show you guys from everything from standard velocity to high velocity, everything to hyper velocity, and show you that this rifle will run. All right, so first off, we have some 38 grainers. These are traveling at about 1,280 feet per second. Um, I believe that's what they are. They're the Federal Black Box. So we're gonna see if this particular rifle, which I already know the answer, will cycle these just fine. All right, 15 rounds. And I did not mention, these are proprietary magazines. These are 15 rounders. They do have a nice little thumb assist right here to help you load that first round, but 15 rounds is what you get. All right, let me look in the pocket of goodies here. Let's save those guys for later. All right, so we just went with a high velocity. Now let's go with some subsonics. Uh, these are CCI subsonic hollow points. These are traveling at 1,050 feet per second. It's gonna be much quieter. I'm gonna have to aim higher. All right, ran subsonic hollow points just fine. Now, you know, I've got to try some Stangers. These are some 32 grain Stangers traveling at 1,640 feet per second. So this is your hyper velocity loads. All right, ran them just fine. All right, see what else we got in here. I think we have some more tracers loaded up. All right, let me see if I can find them. Man, I've got a whole pocket full of magazines here. All right, got some green Piney Mountain Tracers. Before we load them, make sure my suppressor is still good and tight, which it is. And let's just go out to 100. All right, you see that little three inch plate to the left of the big plate? I don't know if I can hit it with the tracer or not, but we're gonna try. Whoa, did you see that? Oh, I was all over it. I scared it pretty good. All right, do we have another magazine loaded up? Right here. Oh, first try. All right, got some orange tracers loaded up. I've had a lot of coffee today, can you tell? I'm gonna hit that three inch plate at 100.
There we go. I think I was going over it. I aimed it a little bit lower. Woo! All right. So I've showed you that this rifle will function with probably every kind of ammunition that you can throw it, whether it be tracers, whether it be standard velocity, low velocity, high velocity, and even hyper velocity, this rifle will just run. Now the accuracy out of this rifle is basically like a Ruger 1022 or a Marlin Model 60. However, this is what makes this rifle different. Let's go out to the 100 yard range and I'll show you a sweet setup. This is why I'm excited about the DMK-22. You see, this is basically the same rifle I showed you guys before. Of course, it's a different color, but this one is a little bit customized, all right? The good thing and the awesome thing about the DMK-22 is simply this. Um, a lot of your AR-15-22 uh, style rifles, they are not really known for their accuracy. They're not bad. Typically the accuracy is like a Ruger 1022, not bad, you know, around two inch groups or so at a hundred yards. But the DMK 22, what makes it so awesome is that any aftermarket Ruger 1022 barrel you want to put on it, you can. You see, there's a little sleeve right here. You take the hand guard off. This is a Vakortsen match uh, Ruger 1022 barrel that I took the Chris, old Chris barrel out, put in the Vakortsen uh, match barrel, and this rifle shoots really, really well. Um, I also had the liberty to change the trigger out. So if you have an aftermarket AR-15 trigger that you want to put in the DMK-22, you can do that. I opted for a three and a half pound Timney. This is a flat face trigger. I've got a target set up downrange at 100 yards. And I'm going to show you what this rifle is capable of doing with the Vokortsen match barrel, the trigger, and some CCI green tag. All right, I have my target set up downrange. i got a magazine full of some... Uh, CCI green tag. Now on top of here, because you're going to ask the question, what optic am I running on this particular setup? This is the Crimson Trace CTL 3525. It is a first focal plane scope, 5 by 25 magnification. It does have their side focus and it, it has an illuminated reticle. Now the reticle in here is designed, you know, it's in mills of course. It really helps you get your correct windage and also your elevation and everything on this particular model is in mills. Like I said before, I got a target downrange at 100 yards. Let's see how this CCI green tag will print out of this setup. I'm going to go for the upper right hand target first. Oh, we got. Try that again. Don't think it went into battery. Could have been a light primer strike. We'll find it out here in just a second. All right. That's not a bad group, but I think we can do a little bit better. Let me load up some more green tag here. Can't really tell exactly, but it looks maybe like an inch and a half group. Like I said, I can't tell. It could be a one inch group. It could be a two inch group for all I know. Let's just load up some more. All right, we're going to go for the bottom right one now. You guys always make fun of me about shooting my 22s off a lead sled. I got some Caldwell sandbags out here now. So you can't make fun of me for that. Glasses are fogging up a little bit. All right. I think that printed out some, let me see. Yeah, it's got some low and some to the right. This rifle, I know, will shoot way better than that. Off camera, of course, off camera, it's always off camera. I have shot up to 
about an inch and an eighth group with this particular ammo. There is no wind whatsoever. It is a perfectly calm day. So I think this is mostly a little bit of shooter error. Pull my glasses away from my face a little bit. There we go. Let's go bottom left. Yep, that's a much better group. Let me go retrieve the target and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Chris DMK-22. All right, I retrieved my target down range. Now, this first group, uh, not bad. I had two touching. I'm gonna get a close up of this target, but I had two touching. You're looking at probably about an inch, about an inch and a quarter uh, inch group, maybe a hair bigger than an inch and a quarter. Now this bottom one, that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. Even I have a bad day of shooting sometimes. My glasses were fogging up. That's the excuse I'm giving anybody, but this is not good. This is typically what I've been getting. I knew after I shot that group, I'm like, that this rifle will shoot a lot better than this. But this is right at about, about an inch and an eighth. This is typically the group that I have been getting out of this setup using CCI green tag with that Vicortsin barrel is an inch and an eighth. Now I've said it time and time and time again in my videos, um, you know, anytime that you can find a rimfire rifle that it will at least shoot MOA, uh, meaning a one inch group at a hundred yards, this is probably just a hair bigger than an inch, you've got yourself a keeper. Um, not all rifles can do that. Now you could probably put a different kind of barrel on your DMK-22 using different kind of ammunition and get even better results than this. Uh, this is the only ammunition, uh, quote unquote, target ammunition or match ammunition that I have right now. So that I am happy with an inch and eighth group, five shot group at 100 yards. So between the first gun that I showed in this video, if you're just looking for a good, reliable uh, AR-15 22 platform, the DMK-22 will fit the build of that. It's, it's a hefty gun. It feels like you're holding a high-end uh, AR-15 style 22 in your hands. It is not cheaply made. It is very well made. Um, and you know, there are a lot of options because they take aftermarket Ruger 1022 barrels and the triggers. You can also replace the grip. And you know, for the most part, it's an awesome, awesome little setup. I've had these guys for a couple of months now, been shooting the fire out of them. And for the reliability, when you're talking about the first gun I showed you, you really can't beat it. This one right here for quartz and barrels, well, I had that one little hiccup in it because the tolerances on a match barrel is totally different than the barrel I was shooting at the beginning of the video. The tolerances are extremely, extremely tight and the bolt just didn't go all the way home. I just re-racked it and it fired the shot. So can't hang up for that one bit. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Go over to my Facebook page, Instagram page, or Twitter pages and ask them there. Until remember, next time, y'all be safe. Keep blinking.